Hello and welcome. My name is Aurio de Paula and I am a professor at the Department of Economics at University College London. In this presentation, I'm going to give you an overview of the BSc program provided by uh, the department. The Department of Economics at UCL is not only a collection of students, educators, researchers, but a vibrant community of scholars. At our department, we are proud not only of the high quality education we provide, which is recognized by employers and graduate programs all over the world, but also about how we provide that education, articulating it with the exciting research and environment provided by a community of international researchers, students, in a global university, in the heart of Bloomsbury, in the center of the best city in the world. Before we get started, let me mention to you that if you have any questions, please post them in the comment section, which we will monitor uh, and answer as promptly as possible. In this presentation, I will give you an overview of the journey of a BSc student in the Department of Economics at University College London. What does it take to become an economist? Perhaps it pays for us to start with an analogy. Let's just pretend that we are in a rocket, a space vehicle, a launch vehicle. It's essentially you in the capsule, and this is essentially you starting your journey as a BSc student in economics. There are three stages to this space vehicle. There are also all sorts of fail-safe mechanisms, escape systems that will help you with any difficulties you may have. The important thing is to remember that a mistake identified early is a mistake that you avoid later. Most importantly, there is support for you, from your teachers, from your personal tutors, the departmental administrative staff, the university as a whole. But in general, at the university, you will have to rely much more than you have so far on your own initiative. And it's important that you learn to be self-reliant. And this is actually one of the goals of the university education. Economics is a quantitative social science. And as such, it's unavoidable that you will spend a substantive amount of time, especially in your first year, roughly about 50% studying maths, statistics, as well as applied economics and introductory econometrics. Those quantitative skills will provide you with the fundamental language to understand economics and its various representations through which economists filter and understand the world. It's a little bit like a map, which is a simplified representation of a landscape. You don't want a map that's too detailed because that's useless, but also you don't want a map that is too simplistic, that will lead you nowhere. But it is important, nonetheless, that you learn how to read these maps. And again, math, stats, econometrics are key elements in the formation of an economist. We're also very proud at UCL Economics to have more and more a research-based teaching platform and framework on which to use um, those things you learn early on in the program. This is exemplified, for example, in the CoreCon project, which is led by Professor uh, Wendy Carlin, which has changed dramatically the curriculum uh, in uh, economics teaching uh, with a fabulous textbook that will be used uh, in your coursework throughout. This project has been recognized 
not only by academic students and teachers, but also by reputable institutions and media outlets like Bloomberg, the Washington Post, the Royal Economic Society, and many others. The connection with research that I alluded to in the previous slide is in the DNA of the Department of Economics at UCL. The Department of Economics at UCL was the top-ranked department in the latest uh, research excellence framework uh, run by the UK government. It has been among the most successful departments in Europe uh, in obtaining grants with the European Research Council. It counts several uh, of the best economists in Europe and in the world, some of whom have uh, won accolades like the award for best economist in Europe given by the European Economic Association, for example. Because of that, you will be immersed in an environment where studying out of your curiosity is essential. And we try to provide various opportunities for our BSc students to pursue that curiosity. As an example, we have an annual conference where students present their own research work called Explore Econ that takes place uh, at some point in term two. And you will see works looking at various different topics ranging from the impact of diversity and segregation on trusting behaviors among youths in London, appreciation of art price during the Second World War, and the impact of homicides on business creation in Colombia, for example. Going into a bit more detail about the BSc program in economics at UCL, let me mention that there are roughly three degrees. The first one is the conventional three-year BSc in economics. It takes about 80% of our students. It's the largest of our programs here in the Department of Economics. The second degree is a four-year BSc program in economics with a year abroad. It's usually taken at partner institutions all across the globe, ranging from the United States to countries in Latin America, Europe, even Africa and Asia. Roughly 10% of our students take this track. And it essentially comprises uh, years one, two, and four that are identical to the first program I alluded to, with year three being spent abroad at our partner institution. The third degree is also a four-year BSc program in economics but with a placement year at an institution such as the Bank of England, the Institute for Fiscal Studies, or a similar entity. Just like the previous one, years one, two, and four resemble the three-year BSc in economics, with the third year uh, spent uh, with the aforementioned um, placement institution. It also takes about 10% of our students, but there is one distinction, in year four, there is a mandatory dissertation related to uh, the work uh, explored during the placement year uh, previously. The dissertation is also available for the three-year BSc in economics and the four-year BSc in economics with a year abroad, but is rather optional rather than mandatory for those uh, two other degrees. Once you enter UCL to study economics, your first year will be spent at about one-fourth of your time studying core principles of economics. Another fourth of your time will be dedicated to mathematics, uh, in particular to mathematical tools that are useful for the study of economics. And another quarter of your time will be dedicated to studying statistics and applied economics. So about three quarters of your time in year one, and in fact, 
in the subsequent years in the program are dedicated to economics. This is, after all, a degree in economics, not a degree in business or finance or management or political science or urban planning. That said, you will also have the option to take additional courses either in economics or outside of economics. Languages, finance, management, accounting, political science, philosophy, mathematics, computer science, whatever the university uh, provides uh, as options uh, to complement um, the study of core economics that you will be uh, going through um, in years one, two, and three, or years one, two, and four. One very interesting aspect of your first year in economics at UCL is the first year challenge, which has been going on for a few years now. And it essentially amounts to having students develop in small groups from the very first days um, in the program a project, a multimedia project on an economic phenomenon uh, of relevance um, locally in the city of London. Throughout all three years in the program, the economics department also provides you with the economic skills lab, which is a series of courses that are not taken for credit, but provide students with skills on research, computation, presentation, writing, and it's seen by many students as a great complement to the more formal courses that they take throughout their undergraduate career at uh, UCL. Finally, already at year one, you will have the option to actively participate in ExploreCon, which is our annual event uh, where we have students presenting their own research work but also various other um, projects uh, related to economics, uh, from videos to photos uh, and other multimedia uh, work. In year two, the second stage for your space um, vehicle, you will again spend about three-fourths of your time on mandatory modules in economics. One of those is on microeconomics, the behavior of individuals, households, and firms. One-fourth of your time is spent on macroeconomics, when you put the trees in a forest and you observe the aggregate behavior in the economy. And finally, one-fourth of your time will be spent studying more formally econometrics and quantitative economics. Uh, which is essentially the application of statistics to economic models uh, and in ways that are useful to economists. The remaining quarter of your time will also be dedicated to um, other options in economics or options across UCL. You will still be able to take courses in the Economic Skills Lab and once again you will be able to participate in the Explore Econ event annually. Your final year at UCL will also be spent at roughly three-fourths of your time in economics, but now in more specialized courses that can be chosen from a list of about 30 to 35 options. Aside from those, you can also take a selection of options across UCL. As in the previous years, you will have access to Economic Skills Lab, and once more, be able to participate in Explore Econ. There is one fundamental difference in your final year at UCL, which is the research component. As I mentioned previously, there is an optional dissertation that would last for two terms, or in other words, a whole year. But from 2020 onwards, if you opt not to take the dissertation, you would need to either complete a one-term independent research project, or take a module with a research-based assessment. I should also mention that the students throughout their career here with us at UCL not only engage with the formal coursework that I described in the previous slides, but also actively participate in student associations and student bodies, like the Economist Society, 
which is a phenomenal organization that puts together not only social activities, runs a student-led journal, but also organizes a series of events with professional economists from business, reputable and renowned academics, Nobel Prize winners, many of which have come to speak to our undergraduate students here, and also policymakers. So, for example, last year, uh, the Economist Society was able to bring Mark Carney in his last public appearance before leaving as governor of Bank of England uh, to speak uh, at UCL. Speaking of departures, once uh, our students graduate, they go to a series of different potential destinations, some of which go to MSc programs in economics, but other fields. Some go even to PhD programs, either in the UK or Europe, or, uh, for example, in the United States. We have sent undergraduate students straight to PhD programs, for example, in uh, very renowned institutions uh, like Yale University, uh, University of Pennsylvania, University of Chicago, for example. Of course, a portion of our students also take employment directly from our program, taking roles in policy making and analysis uh, firms, consulting uh, firms, banking and finance institutions. Tech firms and startups are also a popular choice, but also other options like charities, and even the occasional student that wants to take a gap year and later on return for the study or employment. Thank you for watching this presentation. Let me also invite you to watch the video by Professor Marcos Vera Hernandez on admissions, as well as the recorded taster sessions with Drs. Claude Jenkins and Ramin Nasahi. On our website and YouTube channels, we also provide a variety of resources that hopefully will be informative about the life a student at the Department of Economics at UCL. Finally, let me remind you again to post any questions you may have on the comment section and we will respond to those as soon as possible. I hope to see you soon at UCL. Bye-bye.